Previously on Fly with the Guy. All right, so in Dollar Tree, picking up a bunch of junk, of course. I guess I'll show you all my room. This episode is about to be about crap pad living. Who y'all think that is up there in that blue shirt? What's up? I can lay down and still have some space. Left over. We are headed to Paris to buy three my strength and the low at y'all with these bed bugs. So I just got to Paris. It's game time, baby. I don't know what's up, but somebody is lying because why did I ask like three people on the plane about this bed bug outbreak in Paris and nobody knew what I was talking about? And then I see another headline about it on Instagram. Then we get to the hotel. We ask the, ho the lady at the front desk. She acting like we sweeping Japanese. Ma'am. What's up with these bed bugs in Paris? Now, I know you're not going to be honest with us about what's happening here at this property, but at least tell us what's going on in the city. I like our U.S. news outlet sensationalizing this story, or is it like really not a thing? Our bags have been treated with essential oils. We're about to get into this bed. Now, now, from my research, I will share extreme heat and steam do kill bed bugs. However, like household steamers and like even blow dryers won't kill them however there's a thing you can do like a bed bug test with like an iron or a blow dryer if you put it in the middle of the bed and let it heat up it will simulate body heat which will attract the bed bugs because they'll think there's a host laying in the bed and they will come out that's what we're about to get into right now i also have some lemon scented wipes because they don't like the scent the smell of lemon so Hello you all, so many hours later, because what did Brandon do? Fall asleep without an alarm. Slept for five hours. That was too much. I'm going to start editing a video because that is literally all that I do. This month is edit videos, edit videos, edit a video. But I'm enjoying it. So let me get this video of Vlogtober, yesterday's video, edited and uh, released to you all and then I will come back because I think I want to have a little conversation about some things. Can y'all hear that? Something is in here boiling. <clears throat> mm -mm. Not too much now. Okay, the hot logic is gonna get you together every time. I couldn't decide what I wanted to eat, so I cooked one of each meal. <laughs> um, the curry Thai chicken and the uh, beef short rib. I'm really feeling like I want the beef. There is something I wanna talk about, um, and I was trying to figure out if I was even going to touch on it on the channel, how to approach it, but I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to do the thing. Especially since, you know, I was in here fighting for my life with these bed bug checks. There's no bed bugs here, you all. Everything has been wonderful. But why not just talk about personal safety on a layover sparked by another story that has been broken about a flight attendant being found dead in the hotel room with a sock in her mouth. The headline ripped through the news and social media and while we don't know all of the details of the case and I'm not going to speculate because I'll just wait until the family deems it fit to share 
if they choose to do so. But I know there's a lot of people on my channel who are aspiring flight attendants, preparing for their careers in aviation. So I'm going to do my due diligence and share some of the things I've learned with you all. Now, y'all know I can talk, so I tried to make a little nice little short list. I think it's like 20 things on the list. I made a list so I won't ramble. Also, keep in mind that these are things that I, pra I personally practice. These are things, some of the things that I do not practice. I'm, I'm not even going to hold y'all, but other people do. And I think it's all about finding what works best for you. Someone can't force you to do 101 different things and you do them to fidelity on every single trip. You have to personally find the routine and the habits that fit best with your lifestyle because those are the ones that you're going to commit to. Before the layover, you want to try to never disclose hotel names and locations on social media. So when you're sitting at home on reserve, you're literally waiting to be called. You don't know what you're getting called for. Are you getting called for domestic? Are you getting called for international? Is it a turn? Is it a two day? Is it a four day? You don't know. But when you do get that call, sometimes we can get really excited and be like, oh, right on Facebook, I see it all the time. Cruise girl didn't just assign me a trip. I'm headed straight to fill in the blank with the city. And then you're like tagging the city. So you're already telling people what city you're going to be in. Some of the layover cities are not as big as y'all think they are. <laughs> Some of them are very, very small and very, very tight knit. Next point, when you're getting ready for your trip, please pack a jacket. <laughs> Especially now that the weather is changing, we're transitioning, summer, we're in fall at this point and soon it will be winter. Pack a jacket. I'll hit on that one later, but just before you, just always have a jacket in your bag. A lightweight jacket in case it rains and a heavier jacket or coat when it's cold outside. All right, let's fast forward to you are at work, you're on the aircraft. Please be mindful of your conversations with your coworkers, flight attendants. Y'all know we can be in that galley and we just get to talking and talk, 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 talk because what else are we doing? We don't have nothing else to do. We're talking. And sometimes we get a little loose-lipped with our conversations and we think we're having conversation with each other, not being mindful of who's in earshot. One of the things that you will learn over time is that we talk about the hotel and we code it by the layover. So it's always the Dallas layover hotel. It's the Chicago layover hotel. It's the San Diego long stay. Do not say the name of the hotel because guess what? All crew members have access to the hotel. So if you're talking about a layover hotel and they, what, which one is that? Where, or where, 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 where's that at? I haven't had a San Diego. Where do we stay at? Pull out the phone, pull up the app, pull up the website, go into the internal network and look for yourself. We all have access to it. I don't need to say the name of it out loud because people are listening. While you're on the aircraft as well, you, you cannot assume the intentions of passengers because the conversation happens often. You're on the plane, you're headed to a destination. You have the sweetest little couple. You might be standing in the aisle door and boarding. They start a conversation. You're like, oh, you all going on vacation or you headed back home? And they're like, oh no, we live in Kansas City. Been there all our lives, but our daughter, she's getting married or she's graduating from grad school. So we were in Philadelphia for her graduation. Now we're headed back. And you're just going back and forth. You're talking about your connection to the city or this or that. And then at some point they mention, Oh, so uh, uh, are you all going right back or you st or do you get some time to stay? And then it's like, oh yeah, we're going to stay here for, I think we have like 18 hours here. Here you go, just disclosing information. We have about 18 hours here. Oh, okay, okay. And then they'll be like, well, where do they put y'all up at here when you stay here? It sounds totally innocent. I would love to lean on the fact that their intentions are pure. Nine times out of ten, they probably are. But again, you don't know who else is around them that is listening or the fact that they might just be crazy too. You never know. Lastly, before even getting to the hotel, you have to understand that you cannot be 100% undisclosed. That's why other things have to be taken into account. And let me tell you the reason why. Because as much as you don't post where you stay, you don't talk to the crew members about the name of the hotel, you don't tell the passengers, yeah, we stay down near Bryant Park when we are on our layover. You can say none of that, but the minute you walk off that aircraft, through that airport, and step outside, first, the crew, 
pick up location and the labeled vans will give it away every single time because you always got to walk to the same spot to get picked up and if somebody really want to know where you stay at they know every single day crews come one by one by one by one by one to this exact spot newer i'm looking at you because y'all be having us on front street take some notes from tampa because tampa y'all get it sometimes you be feeling like you're coming through the color people entrance but i like it because it's private and nobody knows where you get picked up and who's picking you up. Secondly, you can want to be private, but some of the hotel shuttles have the name, the address, and the telephone number printed on three sides of the van. <laughs> where do you stay at? Bam. And if you stay, if you're using a hotel shuttle, you have the potential to be on the shuttle with passengers from your previous flight. I'm saying it because it has happened to me before. Next category are uh, personal safety tips when you're at the layover hotel. You get to the hotel, you check in. You want to avoid saying your room number and floor numbers out loud. You have your crew members, y'all are bonded. Someone's like, oh, where you at? Where did they put, which room did you get? Oh yeah, I'm staying in 702. You've now told anybody in the lobby what room you're staying in. I'm on this floor, I'm on that floor. And then you're just telling your business. And it could be innocent conversation with a crew member, but again, you don't know who's listening, who's following, you don't know. Whenever possible, you want to travel to your room with someone else, with another flight attendant, with a pilot. When you get on the elevator, if you are by yourself, I always let them press theirs first before I press mine, but if they don't press theirs, sometimes I press a fake one. Or if you feel completely unsafe, before the door closes, just hit the door open. Like, hit the one for, like, the lobby and be like, oh my god, I forgot I need something. And, and go back. You didn't need nothing. But they don't need to know that you didn't need nothing. You can let them go up the elevator to wherever they was going. You step back out in the lobby like you were going back to the front desk to ask about reward points or Wi-Fi or something. And then you get back on the elevator. When you get to your floor, please, always note where the emergency exits are. This is not even just on some stalker creeper hotel attack stuff but just in the event of emergency you should know where the stairwell is in your little hotel i mean let's just be honest if you gotta like run for your life are you gonna run for your life to the elevator don't let the moment you run for your life be the moment you're also trying to figure out where the stairwell is once you get to your hotel room, always, you want to inspect your room, it's best to do it with the door open. Why you want to do it with the door open? Because you're going to check the closets, the tubs, under the beds, behind the curtains, and also balconies. And you're going to do it for any person that might be in the room. Now, if they're in the room and they're standing behind the curtain, and you pull the curtain, they're going to go after you. You're going to yell. And that's the reason why we left the door open, is because... If you leave the door open, someone is more likely to hear you scream. Depending on the time of day that you check in, there might be housekeeping in the hallway. There might be other people checking in the hallway. Hopefully your crew members are not far from you. Someone will hear you scream if the door is open. The door is shut. It could be kind of muffled. Sounds like the TV's on. If you get assigned a room with a connecting room door, I know those are a little iffy for some people. Prop something in front of it. Use the ironing board. Use, uh, if they have like a lounge chair your luggage, anything that you can put in front of it that makes it harder to open, but also make a loud noise so that you are alerted. Let's talk about the <clears throat> main hotel room door. All right, so first, you wanna make sure that you engage all of the provided locks. So there's usually a deadbolt lock that you can turn as well as a chain, a lever, um, a, a link, something at the top that you can latch so that the door can be opened but not fully open. Let me tell you something, those are just bolted into the wall. So if you don't lock that door and they open that door enough that they can open it, but it gets stuck with enough force, boom, you're in. There are also devices <laughs> that can reach around and unlatch those things. Door, hotel room door can also be unlocked from the outside with a shimmy under the door. Oh my God, I'm giving away secrets. <laughs> People already know. There's a way that you can unlock a, a hotel room door from the outside if the deadbolt is latched. So you wanna engage all provided locks. And if you feel so inclined, use supplemental door locks. I've shared some of them on the channel before. Just do what feels comfortable for you. And again, some people tell you, I don't do none of that. I'm just gone. Some people get to the hotel and they lay down. They're done. Some people 
go the step above for their own personal safety. It's totally up to you. And then lastly, you want to check the peephole on the door and ensure that it has a cover on it because as much as you can see out, some of these older hotels, other people can see in. So you want to check and see, is there a peephole? Is there a cover on it? If there's no cover, cover it up. Put some tissue. You can stuff some tissue in that hole. I mean, I travel with like sticky notes and stuff like that. So I can just put a sticky note right above it. Do what you need to do. Okay, next up, let's talk about when you're on the layover, going out to do the things, having your food, la la. Let's let's start there. So this topic is a little controversial in the flight attendant community. Some are pro and some are con, and that is the use of the do not disturb sign. Some people feel as though when you put it on the door, it's a magnet to tell people that somebody is in that room. So that's why a lot of people do not like it. A lot of people use it one because they want to deter anyone from entering the room so not only like strangers or intruders but actual hotel staff uh, people who have authorized access to your room putting the sign on there do not come in my room for no reason especially when i'm gone so the other one is when you leave your hotel please make sure your door secures properly double check it by hand don't just listen for the sound of the click <laughs> that just happened to me um two weeks ago I heard the click, but something was like, did the door actually shut? And I turned around and I could push the door open. Make sure the door shuts properly. Leaving the TV on is another tip that a lot of people would give. If you turn the TV on and turn the volume up, it gives the illusion that somebody is in the room so that while you are gone, someone won't be tempted to think, oh, I can go in the room and wait and hide. Next, a lot of flight attendants recommend uh, leaving a note with uh, what your plans were for the day and what you were wearing. So you're on a layover, you're down in Columbus. I've never been to Columbus, Ohio, but leave a little note on the desk that says, went out to explore the historic district wearing a black hoodie and blue jeans. That's more so for the solo wanderers, just in case. God forbid something happened and you don't make it back. There's some way to point direction about what happened to you on these 22 hours that you were in Columbus. I can't believe I have to say this, but I'm, I've seen it. Please do not wear lanyards and jackets and things with company branding. And this is why I said earlier, before your trip even starts, make sure you have a jacket in that bag. If, you're, if you know for any reason you might want to step outside, weather changes, the seasons are changing. Don't wear your lanyard. It's, it's not a necessary. Plus you could lose it. Leave that in the hotel room. And then secondly, company issue jackets, because that's all you have on the lid because you didn't bring one. Even if it doesn't say the company name, I say company branding because for those that work at Daddy D, you know the, the name Daddy D is just as prominent and recognizable as the widget itself. People see the widget and automatically know you work for Daddy D. So yeah, let's leave those things in the hotel room. Let's not take them around the city with us. Also, you wanna be mindful, never take your key slip with you in public. And that is this little thing. I'm trying not to show too much of it, but the, this little thing that they have the key in when they hand it to you with your room number because that will have the hotel brand, it might have the hotel name, it might have the hotel information and telephone number and address on it. You don't wanna take that out in public either because you could be sitting at a restaurant, you could be sitting at a bar and you need to go in your bag for something so you're pulling out stuff and you pulled it out and now anyone around you in eyesight sees what hotel you're staying at. That's for everybody, that's not just flight crews, that's for everybody. Leave that little slip, put a note in your phone where you're staying at and the address. You don't need the slip to tell you. It's similar to being on the plane, out in public, be careful with conversation with strangers because I'm a person who is very talkative, I'm outgoing, I can have a conversation with anyone, but I also, I'm also mindful of where the conversation is leading. If you're somebody who gets a little inebriated and gets loose at the lips, you need to practice discretion, okay? <laughs> but I can very much have a whole conversation with someone and, oh, you say, oh yeah, I'm at this Airbnb down on um, off of Main Street and this and... I'm not telling y'all where I'm staying at. I'm not telling y'all how long I'm in town. I'm not telling you who I'm here with. It's all just get to know you conversation, but it's all information that be, could, could be used against you. So be mindful. Same thing when you're out and about on a layover and 
you go out and you wander, you've been gone for five, six hours and you come back, please do another soft inspection of your hotel room. You have been gone all day. That does not mean that your room has sat empty all day, especially if you wanted the room clean. Housekeeping could have came and cleaned the room. They could have left. The door might have not shut all the way. Someone else got in. You never know. Balconies. You left the balcony door open. Someone scaled the balcony. Now they got in the room. You never know. So just always do another soft inspection of your hotel room because you always want to come home at the end of the night, at the end of the trip. The goal is always to make it back home. And then lastly, once you do get back home, just be mindful of the pictures and the videos and the things that you post, especially if certain layover cities, I get, these cities can be so small, you all. If you're a brand new flight attendant, you haven't traveled much, the world could seem humongous. It is very small. And in some of these cities, there might be one or two bars, and that's it. You might have went to, to one bar and you really liked it because that's where the crew always goes. Well, if the crew always goes there, you should not disclose the name and the location. Oh my gosh, let me show you all the pictures of all this food I had at this really great seaside restaurant. Oh, post your pictures. Share your content. Be mindful when sharing the location if it's somewhere that crew frequents a lot. And that's something that you just have to learn over time while you're on the line. That's it. That's all. I've been rambling for too much. I'm getting a little tired now. It's so I am going um, to call it a night. I hope you were able to take something away. For those of you who travel often, for those of you who are crew members, if you have tips and tricks that I did not um, mention in this long period of time that I was just talking, please drop down in the comment section and let us know. But I'm Brandon, I'm a guy who flies, and I will see you all tomorrow.